Hello and welcome everybody. In this video I want to show you my Die Hard Guardian aka the Paladin build. This is a mid game build. I'm power level 9 at the moment and as you can see I started with the medic and I've now added the challenger as my primary archetype. And I will show you a little bit how this build works and feels to play. I started an adventure mode for the first time on survivor difficulty just to show you a few things and then I will talk about guns, weapon mods and the mutators I'm using here and in the last part I will talk about amulets, rings and so on and how they complete the build. I will leave wiki links to every piece of equipment I'm mentioning in this video so you can hunt it down with the adventure mode. Why did I chose the medic over the challenger? I did this for one simple reason. I'm more the ranged type of guy and I don't like shotguns and the starter LMG of the medic is just fantastic. I'm also using a spear and I can throw at range. Pretty devastating. I also have a handgun that makes short work of groups. This can be obtained pretty early in the game once you reach the level. So let's take some damage. Come on. So, as you can see, I'm already healing back, and as I'm not, as long as I'm not taking more damage, I can perfectly out heal that damage. Here we go. And I'm regaining 10% of my total health after a hit. So let's show you how sturdy this build is. Let the big guy play a little bit with us. There we go. As you can see, the damage we receive is pretty manageable. And we're healing back. And now we are getting an additional damage reduction buff, as you can see with the small shield. So, before we are getting in real trouble, we can take a lot of damage. Now we have to revive from the challenger, I'll pop my shield and yeah, as long as we have the shield up, you can really just um, face tank enemies and ignoring the mechanics. Let's talk about the archetypes that make this build. First up, I started as the medic to have access to the excellent healing skills. This one, Wellspring, has a very short cooldown, is available right from the start. And healing shield is absolutely fantastic in boss fights or any other situations. You can basically face tank and ignore mechanics with this shield active and healing back at the same time. I also wanted to have access to the damage perk of the medic. Why? I think it is one of the best perks in the game. It is very flexible and the damage is added to your ranged attacks, melee attacks, to your weapon mod damage and to your skill damage. So this opens up a lot of possibilities on what you want to focus later in this build. Now the challenger is in the main slot because I want to have access to the prime perk Die Hard which gives us a free revive every 10 minutes. This is a very reliable revive option opposite to the handler's revive option that is in theory available every 90 seconds but it also depends on your pet being alive which might not be always the case in a boss fight or in a tight situation. So this Revive is always available and triggers automatically. The 10 minute cooldown will reset at a world stone or on death. I also wanted to incorporate the war stomp skill from the challenger because this is a very nice skill to have once you get swarmed or in tight situations. You also have the ability to equip heavy armor. As you can see I already started to equip a little bit of heavy armor and the damage reduction is around 35% here while still being able to access a normal dodge roll. This diehard guardian setup can easily ignore a lot of boss mechanics at least at survivor difficulty and can shake off a lot of damage which gives you a lot of room for error and 
learning the game. So this is an excellent solo player starting class and setup that you can use from early to mid game, but will also grow into a really, really strong character later in the game. Okay, let's talk about weapons, weapon mods and mutators. I'm using the starter LMG from the Medic. The whole reason I chose the Medic in the first place, it's a fantastic weapon with a big magazine. The only downside is the long reload speed. And we can counter that with the hot shot mod that you can see in the first place here. You can obtain this right from the start. So the LMG and hot shot are available right from the beginning. And Hotshot reloads your LMG. As mutator I'm using the Bandit mutator which grants us a chance to return ammunition directly into the magazine. But what is very important here for an early to mid game build is that this combination is available right from the start and it stays very very strong the whole game through. The melee weapon I'm using here is the Huntress Spear that you can obtain in the Fey world. And as you can see, this has a ranged option that is pretty strong and can be used to preserve ammunition in situations when you are able to open the fight. This one-shots most of the minor enemies and deals pretty devastating damage if you hit a weak spot. And as a handgun, I'm using the Enigma gun that you can obtain also pretty early once you reach the labyrinth. You can find a lot of guides how to obtain it exactly and as I said before, I will leave all the wiki links in the video description. As you have seen before, this weapon is pretty ridiculous against groups and also fires these little rods that then connect and any enemy that will go into this area will be shocked. It is a fantastic weapon to clear out packs. In the last part I want to talk about the amulet and the rings I'm using here that really make the build work and shine. As you can see I have the indignant fetish amulet which is maybe one of the best solo player amulets that you can get in the game. Taking damage from enemies increases all damage dealt by 25% and reduces all incoming damage by 10% for 20 seconds. As you can imagine this triggers a lot and is a nice damage boost and a damage reduction packed into one amulet. In the first ring slot I'm using the Ring of Grace. Taking enemy damage causes 10% of maximum health to regenerate over 10 seconds. As you can imagine, this is a very powerful ability and complements the whole tanky and self-healing setup a lot. This also takes advantage of our high health pool. In the second slot I'm using the Rusted Heirloom Ring which grants us two stacks of Bulwark below 50% maximum HP. As you have seen before, once we reach the 50% HP mark we are getting this little shield symbol on the screen which indicates that we have now another damage reduction active. In the third slot I'm using the Fey Warrior Ring. This is one of the more flexible slots here. This increases melee damage by 15%. I really like the Huntress Spear I'm using here. I'm using it on a regular base, so the 15% makes sense for me. But this could also be a ring that increases your weapon damage, elemental damage, or reduces reload speed and so on. In the last slot I have another ring that improves our survivability. The Ring of the Robust increases maximum health by 10 and armor by 15. Now armor increase at this point is maybe 2 or 3 percent damage reduction on top which is not that much and an additional 10 health might not sound a lot on paper but we have a ring that uses the high health pool as well as our healing shield skill from the medic archetype which also takes in account our health pool to determine the shield strength. So I think the synergies are worth using this ring, but again, this slot is also flexible. You can use whatever you want here. I would say the crucial parts are the Ring of Grace and the Indignant Fetish Amulet. Another ring that I am using from time to time is the Endira's Endless Loop Ring. This one is another excellent ring for this build and will regenerate health as long as you're sprinting. Makes it very easy to get back to full health between fights. 
but if you feel overall tanky enough then you can also switch to a damage enhancing option here. In regard of traits I focused on maxing out vigor and expertise first. These are the best traits that you have available right at the start and the other traits I collected so far are not that impressive. I just received the bark skin trait which is also excellent and I will now focus on maxing out this trait next. Overall, already in the mid game, a well-rounded build that makes it easy to overcome challenges on the first two difficulties. And I'm pretty sure this build will become a pretty undestructible, damage-dealing, tanky machine in the end game. The build is easy to play and easy to manage. No AI, no micromanagement. Everything applies passively, which makes this build overall easy to manage and concentrate on the game and learning the mechanics and acquiring gear before hopping into the higher difficulties. I hope you did like this video. This was made on the quick side, so usually I'm doing this with a script and with more editing, but I wanted to bring this guide to you as quick as possible. So if you want to see more about Remnant 2, stay tuned and keep an eye on the channel. For now, this is all about the game, take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.